Welcome to the live stream, February 9th, 2023. How's it going, guys? Yeah. So, yesterday, I really destroyed this tiger. I realized when I was using my mirror, we mirror back and forth with Ilm and Krita. Let me back up so you can really see. I realized that there were some problems with the head of the tiger and we can't have that. That is the center of interest, the focal point, the most important part of this entire composition. And so, you know, I destroyed all the details so that I could get to the correct structure because we need to have the correct structure. If we didn't have the correct structure, it just would not look right. Uh, especially that we're changing the lighting scenario. So what I'm going to be doing today is working with one brush right now. This is really a drawing brush here. It's small, unless you make it big, obviously. <laughs> but its natural state is pretty small, you know, right around in there. And you can see I've already started working it up all around in here. Look at all of that beautiful texture. And that's what I want. A ton of awesome texture. And we're going off of the <clears throat> the tiger you see on the right. That's our reference image using the wonderful reference reference pen tool that you see that you have in Krita, which is really great. Love that. And you know, I might pull some from this tiger, I might, I might not, you know, pull some really bright colors from this tiger and put it in places. Look at that. Nice little textural areas there. Good morning, Thinker. To getting too far off track. Nope, not too far. Not too far. I feel like I'm more on track now than ever, you know, making that constant progress. Definitely. Getting back to it getting into it and I'm, I'm taking a different approach with this the more I think about it the more I'm like I want texture I want more and more and more texture give me texture please also gonna do all that while keeping the values that I want at the same time that are is needed for you know describing this tiger as best as we can for example up here needs to be lighter we, we have some light that's going to be hitting this. And the last stream, if you check out the last stream, what you'll see is I was in there just throwing around a lot of dark value everywhere, just really darkening up everything, focusing on those shadows first, getting that laid in and um, trying to bring the structure back as much as possible. Definitely. Here's a question. If I, you know, the only thing I really need is my color picker. Let me see. Let me grab this. Come on, grab this. I mean, I could, I could use the right click on, actually, I could use the right click on the mouse to do this color picker, but I don't like that color picker. I don't like it. Um, what if I take this out and I put it here and then I hit tab. Oh, tab. Oh, it goes away still. That'd be so nice if I could do that. So I just see my color picker and the tiger. You could, we could probably do that by going up into the workspaces here, right? Well, actually, we would have to make changes to our current workspace, then save it. So let's do this. Let's do this. We're going to turn off all the dockers, but what we want nothing but what we want so settings dockers artistic color selector no thank you settings dockers can i repeat this advanced color selector yes brush presets no settings dockers layers no settings dockers my goodness palette no and guess what settings dockers recorder not right now Settings, Dockers, Tool Options, no. Dockers, Toolbox, no. Look at that. 
beautifully full screen awesomeness. I can move my guy over here, my tiger guy. And what we can do is we go here and we say, I'm gonna say Chris, pull, picker only. Hit save. And then I should be able to get back to what I was before. Uh, there's, okay, good, yeah, it's there. And then that, look how awesome that is. Freaking love Krita. It's wonderful. This is all free, guys. Friggin' free. Friggin'. Not sure where that came from. I mean, I've been in a special mood the past couple days. Oh, here comes the problem. What layer am I on? <laughs> right? <laughs> oh! Foiled again. I'm on the right layer. Yeah, that's good. I need to stay on this layer. I can't move layers. Well, you can't really move layers if you can't see the layers, right? Maybe you can in some way that I don't know. But what I do know is... Okay, it's so close in value that it wasn't changing anything. That's what I run into a lot is working in a, you know, on the tiger or working on whatever I'm working on. And then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, why isn't this putting anything down? Well, the value is so similar, it's not making any changes. Or maybe it's just really subtle. Oh, I forgot to turn off my Google backup. Pause. Please stop, Google. You don't need to back this up. Thank you. You're going to mess up my stream. Airplane mode for the phone. Way no one could bother me unless they're on the stream and that's fine. So yeah, you can bother me, Thinker, if you want. Because it's not really bother because you're here. You're probably going to ask some really poignant questions that's going to send me down a better road than I am right now. So that's a good thing. Improving with friends. It's kind of like, you know, you can't do anything. You can't really accomplish greatness on your own, right? If you look throughout history, what you're going to see is a lot of people accomplish the most amazing things on Earth. And they do it with others. And that's hard for me. Pretty much a... Um, introvert in most cases. Eh, kind of a, you know, everybody's really an ambivert, can do both. Just depends on what energy I have at the moment. You know what I, I should do? Let's hit R. Let's make this guy a lot smaller. I don't need to use him for drawing. But what I want to do is also have our older tiger in view as well, because we're really pulling a lot of influence from the older tiger. And so when I start working in some of these areas, I need to make some adjustments as well. I mean, there's this really cool kind of main thing that's that's coming up out this way up here. And I, you know, if I could let's see, yeah, there's the right click. Does that have the brush on it that I want? It does not. There's somewhere in settings to change this so I can get 20 different brushes. We'll have to work on that later. Like, or maybe I have a settings, configure Krita. It's actually not too hard to get to. Pop up palette, 10. We want to go up to 20. Okay, and then when I right click on it, look at all those beautiful brushes that are there. But I don't have that one brush saved as a favorite. So if I go to the David Ravoy brushes, I can and right click on this one, assign to tag favorite. And then when I right click here, I'll see it there. And that's the brush. 
So I can switch to this brush, brush pretty fast. Not that speed really matters in a lot of ways, honestly. Accuracy is what really matters. So I wanted to get some of this kind of brushy texture in. Brushes do help you go a bit faster on things. And I could drop this value down so we can build it up from dark to light. Add a little bit of this dark kind of black color in there. Although, is that the background? I don't know. Not sure, but that's okay. We're going to throw it in there anyways. Throw it down and then figure it out more later. That's, that's the mode I'm in right now. Could cause a lot of problems, but there's been so much time I've spent on this where I've been careful, 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 um, learning, 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 and now it's time to really kind of throw down the gauntlet per se and just get in there, work on it. I also need to remember that uh, green and purple and all these other colors are important. Nice greens in some of these areas. Maybe a, take a dark green down here. And then pause for what Thinker's saying. Can you get the same texture in oil paint without getting too detailed? Um, I mean, if you look at my... The preview to the oil painting video. Actually, it's up on Gumroad for painting the eyes. Um, no, I mean, there's several paintings you can look at that I've done. And really, if you want that much texture, there's two ways of doing it, I would say. And really, both of them are a ton of detail. It's just detail in different ways. One way of doing it is like this, where you're doing just a massive amount of brush strokes, which it's, it's actually what I prefer. I really like doing it this way. No, it, it maybe it seems odd, but there we are. I mean, I have my preferences. Uh, the other way of doing it is, you know, it's just a tremendous amount of glazing layers. I had to pause on that one. My brain died for a second. Um, yeah, and when you you create a bunch of glazing layers, you get uh, you can build up texture. Uh, there's a lot of waiting involved in that, kind of wait for things to dry. Really lends itself well to having multiple paintings going at once, kind of thing. So what if what if we had some kind of larger strokes in here? Really kind of play around with. Oof, too too light. Let's darken it. A little bit lighter. I'm not in that place. Brush placement is important. Dexterity is important. You know, you could uh, have the greatest ideas in the world for your oil painting, but if you can't, if you can't put it down in the right place, you're gonna have some problems. Actually, this is a lot more fun, just kind of throwing things down and see what happens. Um, or let me move, the, move you over to the right. Move you over to the right, please. Thank you. And then I'm going to hit E. Oh, that's right. Oh, wow. It remembers uh, my location of my references. I want to get rid. I want to. I want to show some background behind these hairs. So I have to go back to these layers and start removing some. And then we're going to put it all back in. You know, getting used to switching uh, our workspaces is pretty nice, actually. It didn't take me but a second to get back and forth from these. 
Some is darker color. Even darker in some places. Yeah, I would say that, you know, more texture comes from detail. It's all based in levels. I'm trying to think of... Uh, look at Lucian Freud. Wonderful, wonderful example of texture through impasto. Love Lucian Freud's paintings, uh, figurative paintings. Fantastic. I mean, this guy that breaks all the rules and makes beautiful paintings. You know, any, you apply a rule to something, like, then look at Lucian Freud and you go, oh, okay, well, he didn't do that. It looks beautiful. It looks fantastic. Maybe beauty is not the perfect word for him, but anyway. Going back to, oh, which one was it? I never changed that. That's too big. You see W. Still too big. That one wasn't the one. It's got to be the one that's on the inside. Yeah. So always remember that if if I tell you, if someone else says it to you, like, oh no, you must do it this way. This is this is the way to do it. This is the rule. There are very few. Let's do the. Before I get into that, let's get into the year. There are very few hard and fast rules in um, oil painting and art. Yeah, everywhere. Beautiful brush strokes might be better if you work on the background first. Uh, maybe. I mean, we're in digital. Oh, I see what you mean. Like, maybe if, if, if I'm adjusting the background, this would kind of come out. No, I'm expecting that to happen. I'm going to have faith in myself on that. And, you know, it will happen. We'll work on the background afterwards. Because, you know, the main idea of the background's there. You know, like how Richard Schmidt works. Oh, there's another idea for texture. He doesn't get super detailed, but his paintings are, you know, kind of medium texture, I would say. Lucian Freud, Richard Schmid, look at my paintings. Don't put my paintings next to those two artists unless you want to laugh, right? <laughs> um, yeah, as far as texture is concerned, but we'll work on the background afterwards. The general idea is back there. Richard Schmidt, the way, well, the way that he works, which is really interesting, is he'll kind of add in an area of or the way he used to work sorry he's he's not with us any longer unfortunately he'll add in kind of a, a splotch of color you know in an area that he's working close to just so we get kind of an idea you know that color that value uh, to kind of play off of it in some way and yeah he'll keep he'll kind of keep doing that he, he works in these Oh, I always want to call it like building blocks. This is how he works up a painting. And I love it. This is kind of, if you look at a lot of my painting processes on my website, you can see the painting process I've used for every single painting for the past 10 years, because I'm ridiculous that way. I want to show you how, to, how I've done things, if you had any question about it. But you can see how I've worked up a lot of the paintings where I just go right in with, you know, a detail here and make that correct and then move on to the next piece of detail and the next piece of detail and the next piece of detail everything matching the first one that I worked on right kind of like what I'm doing here with the tiger and then all of this is correct and then it's like oh, okay now I can get this big piece and that big piece you know and you just kind of broaden your scope it's like building blocks All right. Lots of ways to do it. You know, the best thing you can do... Oof, that red is too much. Let's keep it. Look how crazy red that is. Let's add it into another a couple places. 
this is like you know our old tiger has some roots in youth you know kind of like your hair you know if you if you see people that have dyed their hair i haven't dyed my hair but um <clears throat> they're you know maybe they they have an indication of reality in there but it looks like these tiger you know the tiger gets gray on the outset but the youth is kind of in the inside pretty pretty interesting and we're adding some of that in there let's not forget it throw it around in some places around in the shadows around here pretty nice yeah look how that kind of helps out the entire scope of the painting i mean heck we could do would you you guys think this purple would work well yes it will depends on where you put it wow look at that see because it's it's like this kind of medium value i can darken it up a bit more and add it within here just as some extra interest uh the it's really intense though we're right on the outside so this would work well in let's say hey, let's go back to my smaller brush like in these dark areas that are transitioning from light to dark, add some purples in there, that kind of intensity. Or even, you know, you go into this intense kind of red. It's right at the transition point for uh, when you're going from light to dark that you'll see a lot of intensities. This is what Monet spent most of his life chasing. Pretty cool, cool stuff. All right, using my smaller brush, let's get this ear figured out. Here's another rule you, you'll hear, always start at the top and go down, or keep it all in one direction. You know, that kind of thing. That's something you'll hear all the time. I'm doing this, back and forth. You look at Anthony Ryder. Anthony Ryder, uh, his drawings are absolutely amazing. And he does these little squiggle lines all over the place, right? He creates a ton of texture, but puts it everywhere to where it kind of like blends in. So, you know, you really don't, you know, it's not really much texture after he gets done with it. Oh, that's a nice gray. You gotta have the grays in here, okay? The grays are important. If you want color to stand out, if you want these light colors to stand out, you gotta have, if you want these intense colors, not light colors. If you want these intense colors to stand out, you gotta have some grays around them. What is intensity without lack of intensity right what is light without dark you gotta have both always like uh reminds me of alan watt he was talking away he was talking about the bible because you know he, he did a lot of research into theology you know, Eastern, Western theology, things like that. And um, he says, you know, when in the Bible, when God says, let there be light, he's not creating light. He's creating a separation between light and dark. He said, okay, we're going to, we have to separate these two things. And then everything in life has positive and negative. Everything in art has a positive and negative. So when you think about or when you're trying to work on something and it's like, oh, this isn't working. It's not bright enough. Well, look at all the other colors. What's around it? What's the relative idea? What's the relative thing going on? What do I mean by relative? Green doesn't look green unless it has something next to it that helps it look green. A banana on the lawn at midnight is not yellow. That's relativity for you. you. Got different light on it. It's dark. Probably gonna be this like bluish color. Yeah. 
Banker likes the purple. Yeah, I like the purple too. Where does it add on the color wheel versus orange? I mean, it's pretty close. I mean, it's right around in here, okay? What would you call that? Like split primary or something? You know? Looks pretty good. Let's add some more in. Let's go like, you know, this deeper purple. Like that band that everybody has been influenced by deep purple, right? Back in the day. All over the place with my brain this morning, so I apologize. I think I've slept well. Brain is firing on all cylinders right now. Here's something that I, I haven't talked about a lot because it's one of those things where no one wants to hear it. <laughs> well, it's probably a lot of my strength. Oh gosh, she's talking about these things. Can you just tell us what you're doing on the tiger? Yeah, okay, fine. Sleep is really important. If you want to improve your artwork, get sleep. I spend, on average, about 10 hours in bed. I have done the research, well, I've done the experimentation and it works for me. It has worked for me for a long time. Athletes sleep for 11 to 12 hours. Well, no, they don't sleep for that, but they're in bed for that time. There's such a incorrect view of sleep and culture all across the world but it's the panacea to most of any health concerns that's it on sleep for me right now made me a better artist so i just want to try and share that with other people okay let's get lighter with this let's go not lighter still I really, I love working in these textural details. I just enjoy it. All of the past teachers are screaming at me right now. No, you're getting too detailed. You gotta work on the bigger shapes first. I'll get detailed and then I'll come back to the bigger shapes and fix them. <laughs> Cause I screwed them up. <laughs> like we've already done 50 times. Yeah, I enjoy the tufts in the front of the ear as well. Like, it really adds some distance to that, doesn't it? I got these this kind of texture thing going on here, though. Let's see what layer that's on. Let's switch to this brush, make it an eraser. Not erasing. Switch back to here. There it is. I want to keep some of that texture on the edges. Pretty nice. That's good. It's good. Back to the layer we want. Back to our full view with color picker. All right. Let's introduce some orange, some orangey color back into some of these tops real quick. I'm looking more at our older tiger down at the bottom. Down there. He's poking up. Down there. I mean, as far as the shape of these hairs, he's an older guy, gal, tiger, thing. And you know, my guess is, I haven't done the deep research on this. My guess is that the hair gets longer as they grow. Maybe a bit more grayer. I mean, how many wonderfully old puppies have we seen where their muzzle has some extra hair on it and it's a bit gray? You know, sad old puppy walking down the, the pathway, shuffling down.
No, oh, that's very sad. My wife and I are extreme animal lovers. We love animals. We have two cats. We always have cats. Our, our boys, we had two boys before. Last year, they, they, they both died within six months of each other. Well, last year and the year before. And that was really, really hard. Especially when you have, you know, these guys after such a long time. But we, uh, we took some time before we fostered, we fostered a pregnant cat <laughs> and she, with, uh, we, we were planning on giving everything back, but we were foster failures and ended up fostering two of the kittens or adopting two of the kittens. Are you going to keep the shock of light on the forehead and cheek might need a little more shadow on the bridge of the nose? Yeah. So here's what I'm thinking about that. Um, you know, our light is coming from above, right? Still coming from above. What's it going to hit? It's going to fall off. So honestly, this, this right here should be a bit lighter. Even like if I pick out this darker black, let's make it uh, a bit lighter and go a bit more to gray. This should have some lightness to it. Actually, I want it more gray. Let's go over to blue, honestly. Lighten it up a bit with that blue color. Because that would get more light. And so this this would be lighter to darker. So, you know, these colors over here, that value is probably a bit closer. Especially, you know, in this kind of place. Don't want to overdo those tufts of hair. And as you can see on this tiger here, I mean, we got this crazy, let's, let's go for the crazy white. Let's see what happens. It's all up in there. And right here, it gets even brighter. I, I intentionally leave a lot of room to work, you know, a lot of uh, space in my values. I, I constantly compress those values so that um, later on I can add punch to anything. I can spike the punch. Intense, intense. So yeah, the light's coming down, right? It's gonna be hitting this forehead really well. We go into deep into the socket of the eye, but then the cheek comes out a bit, okay? It's not, there's no cast shadow on it. It's still gonna get hit with light. I don't wanna make it as bright as this white here, but what I will do is we can either saturate it. Oh, that will darken it as well. You saturate it, you darken it. And let's try it. See right here. Being super careful right there. Being too careful right there. It's almost a bit too much. You know, it could have some problems with the structure of the head there. And I need to bring up that darker color as well. And the reason why it's so bright is because this is the white of the tiger. 
But right here, I could lighten this up a bit. A bit more. That little stroke I didn't like. By the way, I'm still not seeing the chats in your previous live streams. You know, I I looked into that and I see every chat. I don't know. I mean, it could be browser settings for you. It could be something going on. Um, here, I'll show you. Oh my God, I just opened up a million tabs accidentally. Go away, go away, go away. All right, so if I look at my page, I go to live, and then let's click on the next one. There's gonna be, or the latest one. Pause. And then if I if I put my cursor anywhere in here, here's our chat showing up. Which is interesting, I mean, I have mine, you know, uh, at a different view, no pause. So this is the, the normal view here where it shows up on the right, but yeah, it's showing for me, this is Firefox. I'm not sure what you got going on with yours, but you know, and I deal with uh, developers all the time at my job. And you know, one of the things that you get is, well, it works for me. Sorry that that's not very helpful, but I honestly don't know what else to, to say on that. Need to gray that out a whole bunch. Yeah, keep playing around with it, Thinker. Maybe it's just in YouTube. Try a couple different browsers. Open your browser in incognito mode. Do you know uh, how to do that? Oh, and what browser are, are you using? Yeah, how are you viewing my stream? That's a really good. Oh, you use Firefox. On your phone, tablet, PC, Mac. I do this for work, man. Troubleshooting. You got me working right now. It's fine. I can do both. Same time. Go back to my smaller brush. That's most important is I want you to be able to see the chats when you want to see the chats. I think that's important for you. So I'll help you out as much as I can. Especially since you show up here all the time. It's fantastic. I watched a really cool short animated movie. It's about 30 minutes long on my PC with XP pinned as monitor. Whoa, you got an XP pin. <laughs> you rock, dude. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, dude, I don't know. Um, I know there's some extensions that can hide like chat and stuff within YouTube and Facebook. I used to use those for a while because, you know, these these things are made to keep you on the platform. Um, so maybe you have some extensions that are causing some problems. Not sure.
That is looking really good. I'm very happy with this. I'm squinting down though. Always want to keep squinting down and seeing, you know, improvements. Like this black. Let's do this. I'm going to go over here to a blue and then lighten it up. Maybe a kind of a grayish blue. And right on the edge here. Can you even see that? Is that is, look, look, is that doing anything? Like something that tiny of value difference? No one's ever going to see. So we got to we got to bump it up, right? Make some kind of impact with it. Like it's catching a little bit of light there. Same same up here. Darken it up a little bit. Loving all that texture. <laughs> all right, keep going, keep going. We got this. It's gonna take a while, but if we keep, if I keep up in this vein, I'm gonna get a green. Um, it's going to look wonderful, dark green. Look at that. Loving it. Take that, all you artists that stay within the same value range when you're doing everything, or the same hue range. You don't need it. Get outside of your comfort zone and jump into uh, analogous color, complementary color. Learn that color so that you can use the most crazy colors in the right areas and add some life to your artwork. more than one way to add contrast it doesn't have to be with value you could use color to do that i feel like the shape of these these hairs though is a little bit too far out like a little bit too crazy in that direction let's see let's do this let's uh let's go back to our full view oops Sometimes it'll happen where you don't you hit the space bar and you just go <laughs> like, oops, I wanted to move, not paint. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm going to do a selection. Okay. A crazy selection of, you know, th these pieces of hair. And then uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to hit T e, and then control T to get to, is this the warp tool? Is that what I want? Warp, yeah. Let's see how warp works. And you got these little points where you can change the direction of the things, kind of warp them down in a different direction. May or may not work, but we're gonna try it. Would love to be able to do this on an oil painting. Enter. Delete, we're done. That's a bit better. Let's go, let's get back into it, in, into the full screen again. Oops. What did I do? Hit B, go away, okay. Well, I need to make sure that I hit spacebar and then start moving things. I'm doing things too quickly and uh, Krita can't catch up with me. I like that kind of darkness there, okay. Thinker says, there must be a setting in YouTube that I'm not aware of, but by the way, I was the IT director for a visiting nurse group for 20 years. IT. <laughs> All right. Okay. I understand your level of uh, technical knowledge now. Yeah, yeah. So you know what you're doing. It's got to be on YouTube, man. See if you got any errors in console. Ooh, and if you know what I'm talking about there, then I really know you got some chops. I always freak people out when I tell them I'm a, I do a lot of tech stuff because you don't see a lot of artists that do tech stuff a lot. They're like, really? They're like, yeah, 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 I coded my own website. I know how to do all that stuff.
I, I'm not super low level. I'm, I'm at a high level kind of coding. I and mean, for everybody out there, low level means it's harder. High level means it's easier. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP. Well, PHP can get to a low level, but that's where I'm at. But I really don't want to do it anymore. I just want to paint. Uh, I mean, I don't, I actually, I don't, I'd rather not mess around with my WordPress site any longer and just, you know, create as quickly as I can, you know, in a lot of cases. Let's remove some of this. I'm going to select a random color, see where it works. Okay, let's drop this value down because we have, remember, light's going down. So darker or lighter up here than darker as we go down. So I want to make sure that these guys are going to be in a bit more shadow. Let's saturate some more. Just some kind of tufts of saturation there. Go all the way to gray. Let's go to gray on this. And some green. Yeah, it's looking looking a whit, bit weird. It has to do with the values. What's going on? What's going on? needs to be a bit darker yeah let's take a let's get one of these dark greens nice you know I thought at one point that I was going to start doing some um, videos on how artists can build their own website. But then after thinking about that for a while, after really thinking about that, and then coming to the realization that, you know what, I don't really want to mess with my own website. I want to keep people painting. The last thing I want to do is distract them with building their own darn website. I got distracted enough with that. Throwing in a lot of idea down here. Not sure how much of it I'm going to keep. Just trying to get a, a general shape of this beautiful mane that our older tiger has. dark to light, light to dark doesn't matter right now, just kind of throwing in some idea. so sure about all that. But 
That's looking really good. Still need some refinement in there. Let's go to... Man, getting used to that uh, pop-up picker or the, what do they, what do they call it? The quick palette or something? Getting used to that is gonna be very helpful, I think, for me. I'm gonna get rid of that tiger. Not really using that tiger much anymore. I'll bring it back when we get into the body, even if we, if we even need it. I just opened console, had it running, looked at yesterday's stream on YouTube and saw the chat's just fine. Go figure, yeah, that, that's weird. <laughs> that is so odd. We, we have another tech guy artist on stream. It's all you, Thinker. I had no idea. Fantastic. Let's get into these eyes. This left eye in particular. Not even going to look at my reference. What I'm going to do is first make our pupil larger with all black. too large nope and go a little bit darker around it there's this really interesting like very intense color that happens around these I can remember from just you know doing it previously and then let's uh, go closer to yellow and lighten it up in a couple places too and then pick out this green Intensify that green. Not too much, not too much. This kind of yellow color, I want to intensify that as well. Now when I'm this close in, I really can't see anything. Like what are you talk about it, you see all kinds of stuff. Look, look at all that detail you can see. Well, yeah, I, you have to really kind of zoom out to see what actually happens. 100%, this is what you actually see. So the first thing I notice right away is that, you know, the top shadow on the eye needs to get darker and I need to, you know, blend like I did on the previous eyeball. So I don't, do I have my blender brush? Yeah, right there. And that's one of the under layers. Let's go back to this one. No, let's go to this one. Yeah, no, that, that was. Uh... Yeah, it was this one. Soften that in a bit. Softening this one a bit. Looking good. Now I'm going to switch to a really big airbrush. <laughs> I love the ability just to, you know, you pick out some crazy color and just go, ah, and then control Z. 
so much fun. Reminds me of Scott Christensen. I was watching a video of his. Um, he's an amazing landscape painter. Uh, kind of like Clyde Aspavag. I think that's how you say Clyde's name. Very similar in aspect, very structural landscape painter. Matt Smith is another one. Uh, in one of Scott Christensen's videos, because, you know, he's got like a million people that want to paint like him, right? Um, he's giving some instruction and then uh, to further show what he's talking about. I think he's talking about value or something like that. And, you know, placing the right value in the right location. He takes... Um, the color that he's working with on his palette and he goes over because he's like teaching in his gallery or something like that where he's, he has all these paintings on the wall and he's like you would not take this value and place it right here and he just slaps a piece of color on a finished painting like this dark color like in a big splotch and the, the whole group of audience just gasps they're like oh my god <laughs> And I, I loved that you know, because what that is an illustration of is confidence. You know, when you've painted so much, you've worked your butt off so, so much on these things. Oops. Um, it, you know, screw ups don't matter. You could take a beautiful painting that, you know, anybody else would think is, is absolutely beautiful that you don't like and completely just set it on fire and say, I'm done with that or throw it in the trash and, you know, whatever. It's not a big deal uh, because you have the confidence that you can do it again and the next time it'll be better. That's what we're talking about. That kind of confidence. There's also a tendency to, you gotta be careful with that because you could, um, is it me or does he look like he's looking up? Anyway, let me finish that statement. Be careful with your confidence because you could go overboard on it and end up, uh, end up doing some things that you could miss taking benefit from, right? Miss opportunities because you have too much confidence. I really feel like, so, and let's do this. Here's the bottom of this eye. Here's the top and the center of the pupils right there. Okay. Bottom, top, center. It's so slight, but when you're talking about likeness and expression, you're also talking about literally like millimeters of difference to change an expression, to change a likeness. So I'm going to move this down. Yeah. You know, another thing I'll say there is if you see it, don't ignore it. I did this so much when I was younger. Like I'm really old. Right, thinker? <laughs> uh, 47, be 48 this year. Youngin. <laughs> I would say in Kentucky, or they, they say in Kentucky where I was born, you're still a youngin. Um, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, so many years ago, so much, so many times, I would, you know, you see your errors, you know they're there, you see it, you're like, eh, something's wrong, but I'm just gonna ignore it. Don't ignore it. 
That's where your growth is. That's where you get better. Confidence equals arrogance plus humility. Yeah. Humility. It's really important. I was watching a video. Oh man, I forget the guy's name. I actually don't like him as a YouTuber, but this video was specifically good. Actually, he went, uh, my idea of him increased after watching the video, but he was talking about uh, confidence and arrogance and how in, in many situations it's seen as, you know, this really negative thing when I think confidence is, well, his point, and I agree with him in a lot of ways, is you can be very, very confident. And you can do it in a very, very positive way as well. Like, I'm confident that I can help you. I'm confident that I can create a good painting. I'm confident that I can overcome my issues. You know, whatever that may be. Confidence is a good thing. Having too much arrogance involved in that, I think, is where you get to trouble. All right, before I get into the, the gray here of the white, I'm going to jump back into my very dark color. Let's go for a quicker brush first, this guy. And we're going to start throwing in some of these stripes real quick. Now for the stripes, I'm looking at the, the top tiger, not the bottom tiger, uh, in most cases, because I like, so oof, that is not black. I could have swore I selected this darker black color. There we go, a purple, dark purple, a deep purple, if you will. So I'm gonna hit some of these shapes with a bigger brush so I can do it a little faster because I have a bit more confidence because I've put in the hard work on this. We've reworked this freaking tiger like 50 times, it seems like. But I don't feel bad about that. I don't feel bad about it at all. Next time you go to a museum, and please go to museums and see paintings in person of the artists you love or the artists you don't love because they're telling you something too and look how amazing they are in person I think it's really important but when you go there and you by chance happen upon a John Singer Sargent painting a portrait because you know or one of his watercolors whatever he's done usually there's a figure in all of them um, understand that his oil paintings sometimes were redone 10, 15, 16 times. He's notorious for painting a head like the model sitting there for hours. Or was notorious. He's dead now, of course. Um, Models sitting there for hours, a person that's paying him, you know, this is, you know, 19th century, early, mid to late 19th century, to paint a portrait and he's working, working, working. And he's like, nope, it's not working. Scrapes it all off. Come back tomorrow. We're going to do it again. <laughs> and, you know, at that time, he was the maestro, the and what did they do? They said, okay, yes, yeah, yeah, well, I want the best. And they would leave. And the next day, he would paint them again. Same place, same person, paint them one more time. Scrape it all off and go, nope, still not working. Up to like 16 times he would do that. So when you go to museums and you look at that little placard right next to a painting, it's not going to say this person redid this painting like 16 times, or it took this person four and a half years to create this painting. It's not going to say that. And why that, why I'm saying this is because 
when you finally see that, when you finally understand all the, the hard effort and time that goes into these amazing works, you can relax because they had to work hard too. It's not talent. It's a ton of effort. And effort is so much easier than talent. Ta talent is a limiting belief. Oh, I just don't have the talent, which you hear everybody says, Oh, I, I, I can't even draw a stick figure. Well, have you practiced? Well, of course not. That's why you can't draw a stick figure. I can't play professional football. You know why? <laughs> because I haven't practiced. And because I'm getting up there in age. That's one thing. Age is the ultimate leveler, isn't it? King, peasant, pauper, we're all at the same at the very end. Oh, I'm getting very deep while I'm painting this tig tiger, right? The great thing, and actually, um, I was watching a video on Proco. They had a comic book artist, a guy who was doing like cover art, like a colorist. And he was fantastic. I forget his name, but um, he said, you know, the best thing about art, and he was an older guy. He'd been, you know, doing comic book covers for decades, right? He's like, the best thing about art is unlike uh, athletes, who work for several years, you know, uh, mess up their back or their knees, mostly knees, right? Uh, they're done, you know, they're done. They can't do what they love for the rest of their life. So they have to, you know, be on Monday Night Football or something else or whatever they do. You know, they, they find some other way to be in the thing that they love, right? But age will bring them down from that. But art, you can do until the end of your life. Even Matisse, who had uh, just severe arthritis, had an assistant that would put a brush in his hand and kind of strap it to his hand so he could do his paintings. Uh, even Monet, who at the end of his career had severe cataracts and everything went brown, right? Still painting. Guess what? Those paintings? in museums, <laughs> right? So that's the great thing about art. It's the same as anything you want to get better at. It just takes time and effort and you can do it for the rest of your life. And you need to because art is complex. Every year when you think that you're done, you think, oh, I've reached a high level. Art's going to say, nope, you still have some time. Uh, you know, every master artist out there understands that there are no masters in art. That we're all on a journey, an infinite journey. And at some point, maybe we'll get further along. And we'll reach a, a higher level that we've never reached before. It's the infinite game. Art. Perseverance. Yes. Guess what? That's what we're doing, guys. All about perseverance. Act like the tiger. Have the eye of a tiger. Watch Rocky movies. And keep working because the tiger is going to keep working. And if you have a dream of being an artist, yeah, keep working. That's all you need. Daily art. Look at my website. I'll show you everything. The infinitum. I'm way past my time. Started at 4.30. Oh, well, no, I'm only 10 minutes past. This is looking really fantastic. It's blowing away our background that we worked on. Here, here's what is fun. This is what's really fun is when you're working on a piece and 
I know that maybe what, several days ago we were working on this background. I'm a much better artist since then, digital artist. Fantastic to really understand that. Like the improvement comes with work. You do the work, you improve. You practice, 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 you improve. You wanna get, get better faster. And it's, it's kind of like the, um, the questions that a lot of artists get on YouTube. How long does it take? <laughs> How long did it take you to make that painting? Um, I can understand that. That's a question that, uh, you know, even like, I still want to know. Well, okay. Well, how long did that take you? But how long does it take to be good? Well, that depends completely on you. You have full and utter control over this. You want to get really good in a year? Uh, get a job in art, like production, where you have to hit a deadline or something like that. That'll get you good really quick. Eight hours a day doing nothing but art. You may not like the art that you're doing. Maybe it's not your art, but heck yeah, you're going to get constant feedback from a client or from someone that you're working for on what's good, what's not. And you, you know, you're showing up every day because you're going to get paid, right? To do your art. That would be fantastic. That's how you get good. And if, you know, if you're working a job like me, uh, where most of my day is spent on my work computer, making the money so that, I, that me and my wife can survive. If you have that situation, which most of, most of us do, uh, take an account of everything you do throughout your day. And if it's not aligning you to your artwork, to your dream as an artist, make a change. Say, okay, I really like watching that TV show, but I could spend the 30 minutes or 45 minutes of watching that TV show instead of watching it, doing some artwork every day. And progress so much faster. Again, go to my website. One rule on my entire website has kept me going at least 30 minutes a day, every day for the rest of my life. There has been months where I've only done 30 minutes for 10 years now. And I continually, constantly get better and improve all the time. And that's what it takes. Now, I, I, you know, I could have probably cut that in half if, if I was working every single day, you know, eight hours a day on that. But, that, you know, the only way that that's sustainable is if it's like, okay, I need this job to survive, really. That's really the only way that much time is sustainable. Uh, burnout can happen pretty easy. It's a different type of energy. You'll have to ask your wife if this will pass as a Sumatra tiger. Yeah. Um, I've showed it to her a couple times and, and so far I've been getting the green lights. So, you know, we have some connections with other zoos and things like that. So I bet you I can get in touch with a, a zoo, uh, a keeper that takes care of Sumatran tigers and send them this image and ask them if it's accurate and then follow up with, Hey, you want to buy it? <laughs> Those zookeepers don't make a lot of money, so probably not. Okay. Before I end the stream, we are going to get extreme. Yeah, I was, I was going for some rhyming there. I think it worked. Okay. Um, purple, deep purple. We need more purple. 
What's the trick to this? Put it in the right place. What's the right place? Base it on value. That's it. Base it on value. If I have a high value up here and a high intensity, put it up there. Doesn't look that it doesn't look that bad, does it, right? It's like, okay, yeah, that's a bit extreme, Chris, but you know, it, let's go to you know, back up. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's got some kind of extreme color to it. Uh but yeah, it works. But if I put it like down here, it's like, whoa, okay. Not a problem. That that yeah, that's that doesn't work. So what you do, select this value down here. Okay, there you are. There's that value. And then just move it to purple. Or even better, select this value here. Well now no, you had to change the hue this way. So I'm looking at the distance it is from the center of this color picker, which by the way, I could probably make this larger, which this is the problem with Critic guys, is trying to get that one pixel to actually adjust the size of any of the windows is a lot of fun. Okay, so if it's here, I want the same distance away from the center over here. So probably about right there. And then put it down where you got it. There you go. Look how that extreme color makes sense there. Oof, on the nose. Let's, let's put it on the nose. Purple, pur purple. Let's go to a magenta here. So this kind of nice, getting a bit red, magenta, too dark. Lighten it up a bit. I didn't lighten it up. I changed in a different way. And I hit this color and make it more red. So right here, there's going to be um, kind of some lighter colors and it's going to change. So we have this kind of shadow area, which I need to darken up in some places here under the eye. And then it kind of flows out and then down like that. Actually, it probably goes out and then down like that. Oh, that the tiger's crying. Poor tiger. But at this point right here where we transition from light side to dark side right at that point is where intensity is going to happen okay right in your half tone of the terminator area like arnold's remember arnold schwarzenegger and add in some intensity hopefully you know what a terminator is if you don't i could i could show you that as well I'm, but before I do that, I'm bringing some intensity everywhere. Actually, I like these oranges within this tiger here. No, the, the deep, there we go. That one. Deepen it up more. Maybe not that much. Add too much. Go further. See, like, this is your comfort zone, okay? This is what you're used to, this box here. You want to go just a little bit outside of it. Not all the way over here. It's going to look crazy, right? You're going to snap. You're going to break. It's going to be too far. But you're going to break outside of what you're doing just a little bit. Make a really big brush and throw in some crazy color. It's digital. Whoa. Maybe not that right, right there. I can control Z it and I can make some adjustments to it. You know, I think this is where I was failing on this tiger a lot is not doing this. So much more interest in the tiger right there. Don't get caught in this trap that you have to paint this oh, let me make it lighter you don't have to paint what you see all the time okay it's a plan it's a diagram and you use it as an influence and then you go from there i can't wait to get deeper into these kind of lighter colors up here I just love this. We're well out of the ugly stage with this tiger right now. 
and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And try and put in some just general highlight values just to kind of see test the waters a little bit dipping my toe in there see where we're at And I've compressed my value so much that we have so much range here. Look at this. If I go extreme white, look how much difference that is. I have a ton of range to hit. And I haven't even got into the crazy like digital stuff where like uh, color dodging everything <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait to start doing that. That's all green. It's fantastic. Let's go crazy purple down here. Like a dark purple, maybe too dark. And let's grab that green value here and then just turn it to a purple. Oh, now we're looking at, now we're having fun. Oh yeah. If you haven't already, and Thinker, I think you're the only one left, but I'm still gonna repeat it because a lot of people will watch this later, hopefully. Uh, all the resources for this live stream is on my Gumroad. And you can get to that from my website, which I have linked in the description. $10, right now we're up to, what are we up to? I think like 39. 38 or 39 live streams of nothing but uh, like I'll save this Krita every single day, this Krita document uh, from the beginning. And you can go in and you can pull them down and see what I've done, play with the Krita documents that I have. I have other documents up there, like our whole design process documents, everything for $10 on my Gumroad. And if that's too expensive for you, you know, and you're an artist not making a lot of money, totally cool. 50% uh, off if you use the code CB50OFF. It'll help me out a ton. Help me on my way to become a full-time artist. Yeah. Which hopefully will happen sometime in the future. But we'll see. We'll see. All right, guys. Thank you, Thinker. Thanks, everyone, for showing up. Uh, thanks for all the conversation. And um, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow's Friday. Yay. I will see you tomorrow. Same time. Same place. It's looking really good. I can't wait to get back to it tomorrow. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.